Recently, I was approached with an interesting problem. The aim here is to wrap this path onto the cylinder to create a groove. This is a simplified version of the actual path. You might have seen the same problem or some variation of it on Reddit or the forums. In this case, the solution needs to fulfill a few specific criteria. The path has to be geometrically wrapped onto the cylinder, meaning that it cannot be a straight projection. If you look at the cross section, the groove needs to have side walls that are parallel to each other. The base needs to be concentric with the cylinder. The embossed command is often touted as a solution to this sort of problem. Let's try that out. So I have created a profile sketch with the original path as the center line. Go to Create, Emboss. Select the sketch profile. For faces, click on the select box and select the cylindrical face. Adjust the depth to create a deboss. If you look at the cross section, we can see that the side walls converge towards the center. As we move towards the center, the width of the groove actually decreases. So it is clear that the emboss command is not going to give us the final result that we need. But we will still need to somehow use it, as it is the only command that has a wrapping ability. To some extent, the sheet metal command can also do that, but that is not within the scope of this video. Let's not worry about creating the groove for the moment. Let's first think about how we can wrap this path onto the cylinder. Instead of creating a profile sketch, let's use this path to perform a thin extrude. Begin the extrude command and select the thin extrude option. With the chaining option checked, select the whole chain of open sketch lines. Just extrude this to an arbitrary distance. The thickness here would also be arbitrary. Take note that the thickness here does not represent the groove width. For wall location, adjust it to one side so that the path edge is exposed. The whole point of doing this is so that we can have a close profile for the emboss command. The emboss command can only take a sketch, so we will not be able to use this face. Simply create a sketch on this face. and project. We are going to emboss on a copy of the cylinder. Go to Modify, Move Copy. For Move Object, select Bodies and select the cylinder. Check on the Create Copy option. Confirm this without moving. Rename both cylinders. And hide the original. We can also hide the thin extrude. Perform an emboss with this sketch.
go to inspect measure let's compare the length of this sketch entity to the corresponding edge of the emboss both are equal so this proves that this is a true geometric wrap Through the use of a thin extrude and an emboss, we have wrapped this path onto the cylinder. So the only useful part of this emboss is this chain of edges. How can we use these edges to create the final groove? Activate the Surface tab. Go to Create, Root. Select these edges that represent the wrapped path. For type, set to Normal. Adjust the distance towards the center of the cylinder. This will be the groove depth that you need. Let's hide this body to take a look at the root surface. Bring back the original cylinder. Go to Create, Thicken. Select the root surface. Set direction to symmetric. Set operation to cut. Adjust the thickness to the groove width that you need. Let's take a look at the cross section. The thickness happens in a direction normal to the surface. So this creates the parallel side walls that we need. However, this same property means that the cylindrical surface is not preserved. In the case of this vertical segment, this face is actually flat due to the nature of the thickening. One way of resolving this is to use the replace face command. Create a circle sketch to represent the diameter of the base of the goof. Extrude this into a surface. Activate the solid tab. Go to Modify, Replace Space. The source faces are the faces that you want to replace. So click on these faces. The target face is a new face that you want. So click on the select box and select the cylindrical surface. 